Osteoporosis is a common disease all over the world. Bone loss, a silent process affecting millions of individuals around the globe, is often overlooked. Currently, osteoporosis affects one in five adults aged between 18 to 59 years in India. Osteoporosis that is not treated can lead to serious bone breaks, especially in the hip and spine. Many people think osteoporosis is simply linked to old age. The older we get, the more chance we have of developing osteoporosis. While that is true in some ways, age isn't the only factor involved and osteoporosis is linked to various other medical conditions. You'll be surprised to know that even hormonal imbalances can cause osteoporosis and the good part is that there is a lot you can do to protect your bones throughout your life. You're never too young or too old to improve your health of your bones. The cornerstone of the prevention and management of osteoporosis is to improve knowledge and awareness among the general public. Today, we have with us eminent endocrinologists who can help you understand and manage osteoporosis. Dr. Himan Fatale, consultant endocrinologist, Samrat Endocrine Institute and Diabetes, Obesity and Thyroid, that is in Aurangabad, Dr. Ashish Segal, Consultant Endocrinologist, Dr. Ashish's Endocrine Clinic in Karnal, and Dr. Arjun R. A consultant at uh, the uh, Consultant Endocrinologist at Aster MIM's Kanor. Let's head straight into our discussion now. now Hormones are essential to the overall well-being of our body. What type of body functions are affected by hormones, Dr. Heman Fatale? Yeah, it's true. It's a, it's a more than 50 hormones are being secreted in human body. And uh, these hormones control or regulate various body functions. Uh, there are two types of hormones, peptide-based and the steroid-based. Peptide based are water soluble, while steroid based are fat soluble, which can easily cross the cell membrane. So, if you look at these uh, hormones, as it said, control or regulate, it has various functions, right from the, it helps in a food metabolism and thereby control of body temperature. It regulates your thirst as well as hunger. It regulates uh, uh, your mood and the cognitive function as well. It helps in creating and maintaining the sexual health and the reproductions. And at the same time, it is important that the, uh, it helps in bone building, bone breaking with the help of the parathyroid hormones and the minerals like calcium, phosphorus, and the six hormone like estrogen as well as the uh, testosterone and so hormone maintains the harmony of life this harmony leads to the disturbed physical mental and the sexual health disturbing bone health may lead to a crippled life that's how the hormone is important hmm. in anybody's life hmm. So, how can thyroid problems weaken your bones? Uh, does levothyroxine medication weaken the bones, Dr. Arjunar? Yeah, so thyroid hormones do affect the rate of bone replacement in the body. So, in simple terms, what you can understand is that too much of thyroid hormone in your body speeds the rate at which bone is lost. So, this, if this happens too fast, the osteoblasts, which are the bone-forming cells of the body, these osteoblasts may not be able to replace the bone quickly enough. So, if your thyroid levels in your body stay too high for a long period or if the TSH is suppressed for a longer period, there is a high risk of developing osteoporosis. So if you have hyperthyroidism or an overactive thyroid gland, the first step is to treat the overactivity. So once the level of thyroid hormones in your body has been reduced to a normal level, the bone strength may improve. And hypothyroidism as such or an underactive thyroid gland is not a risk factor for osteoporosis, but as you had pointed, if you are on levothyroxine supplements, it is important that you always see your doctor on a regular basis, get your thyroid function test done and make sure that your thyroid hormone levels are not at a very high level so as to prevent accelerated bone loss. Okay, but uh, what is parathyroid gland and how does parathyroid hormone cause osteoporosis? Dr. Ashish Segal. <clears throat> yes, see, parathyroid uh, glands are very small uh, glands, four of them in number, 
and the size is of that of first grain and they are located deep inside the thyroid and uh, they are very small but they are tasked with the production of a very uh, important hormone called parathyroid hormone or para hormone so what this hormone does it it is tasked with the maintenance of subsystem calcium calcium in our blood stream and why it is important it is important because calcium is very uh, i mean crucial for the normal functioning of our muscles our nerves our nervous system almost all cells of our body require normal levels of serum calcium for their cell membrane activity and minute to minute regulation of serum calcium is what is the function of parathyroid hormone now when there is excess of this hormone in our blood stream that is what is known as hyperparathyroidism it can be because directly because of a tumor of the parathyroid gland themselves or it can be related to some other uh, problem in our body somewhere else where when we call it secondary hyperparathyroidism so when parathyroid hormone levels increase then we can have reduction in bone mass uh, uh, osteoporosis so what parathyroid gland uh, or para hormone does is it maintains normal serum calcium level by reabsorbing calcium from the filtered urine in the kidneys by absorbing calcium from the food we eat in our intestine but another important mechanism of maintaining serum calcium levels is by absorbing calcium from bones as well mobilizing calcium from bone calcium stores under normal physiological conditions this does not lead to bone loss but when there is hyperparathyroidism when there is excess of parathormone then there is excess mobilization of calcium from the bone and then when it uh, i mean pertains for a certain period of time it gradually leads to loss of bone mineral density and osteoporosis so there is a paradox here hmm. uh, parathormone excess leads to osteoporosis but osteoporosis is sometimes treated with parathyroid hormone as well the difference is chronic excess leads to bone loss but when it is given in a pulsatile way then it can lead to increase in bone mass as well then so we have parathyroid hormone analogs and synthetic parathormone available for treatment as well. nevertheless chronic excess leads to loss of bone calcium and hence osteoporosis can osteoporosis caused by hormonal imbalance be managed well with prevention and lifestyle changes do we still have medicine to manage bone health dr himant fatale yeah the word uh, as you said is osteoporosis is that essentially means a porotic bone hmm. they are porous and easy to break and this bone formation in terms of length it starts from the in utero and it is it's till the co- completion of puberty the bone length is increasing and later on the, the mass is also increasing and after the adolescence this bone making and breaking is a continuous lifelong process this making is more till the age of third decade and after that breaking is more than the making and women up to 50% of their bone mass is lost during their lifetime while in men it is almost th- 25 to 30 percent bone loss in their lifetime, and see if you don't want to break the bone, then don't fall is the dictum. And if you do, if you don't don't want to get fall, then you need to modify modify your your lifestyle in terms of diet, which should be rich in calcium, and buffalo milk will give one ml is equal to two milligram of elemental calcium. while cow milk in a pure form 1 ml is equal to give to 1 mg of calcium besides there are certain fruits also like chiku or maybe custard apple or various food items will also contain contains high in calcium that should be followed and besides that it should be adequacy of vitamin d is very important see in adequate vitamin d will will not respond to any sort of the uh, and osteoporosis management drugs will not act properly vitamin d is very important for the bone building as well and proper functioning of parathyroid gland dr ashish was talking about the the function of the parathyroid gland and that is also vitamin d dependent though it is called vitamin d it is a actually a hormone by definition and this vitamin d is produced below the skin under the sunlight with specific ultraviolet rays that is available between 11 to 1 o'clock 
and for indian scheme 45 minutes sir exposure is required for adequacy of vitamin d and besides this diet change we need to have a increase muscle uh, balance muscle mass and for that we need to have a anti gravity uh, uh, muscle strains with uh, that exercise should be regularly be done at least 150 minutes in a week and that that can be a simple walking or maybe jogging or maybe cycling or maybe stair place climbing as well and besides the, the extensor muscle exercise also equally important and so with this diet and exercise the frailty is decreases the, the imbalance will be decreases at the same time one should if you are habitual of either tobacco or alcohol should need to stop that as well and besides all these we need to take a note that the all bathrooms are slippery bathrooms hmm. and the dry bathrooms concept should be placed so that the uh, if you look at the all old age many mishaps occurred in bathroom itself so that can be prevented uh, with the uh, adequacy of the uh, muscle strength and avoiding the slippery surface as well now menopause and just after menopause is a time when osteoporosis commonly presents itself why does menopause cause osteoporosis dr arjunar hi hey, so as you had rightly pointed out preventing bone loss is an important concern for women during menopause and uh, as sir had uh, highlighted older women are more at risk of osteoporosis and are more prone to fractures so if we look at the physiology what happens is women reach their peak bone mass at around an age of 25 to 30 years so this is when their skeleton has stopped growing and their bones are strongest and thickest so the female hormone of estrogen plays an important role in maintaining the bone strength so at the time of menopause what happens is estrogen levels drop and this results in accelerated bone loss so research shows that on an average women lose up to 10 percentage of their bone mass in the first 5 to 10 years after menopause so this is one reason another reason which we can attribute uh, to the increased bone loss is menopausal women are at a higher risk because they are not getting enough minerals that help to maintain healthy bones so when you aren't getting enough calcium what your body does is it uses the calcium stored in the bones leaving the bones weakened and more vulnerable to fractures so these are some of the reasons why menopausal women are more prone to osteoporosis and fractures hmm now at what age should one go for regular bone density test the tests are available to diagnose osteoporosis are they dr ashish sagar yes uh the uh, the gold standard test and uh, which is easily available for uh, measuring bone mineral density or rather aerial bone mineral density is dexa so dexa is the gold standard and it stands for dual energy x ray absorptiometry it is uh, just like a routine x ray but it uh, exposes us to much much less radiation uh routinely uh should be done in women as the global guidelines recommend beyond 65 years of age so for women beyond 65 years and for men beyond 70 years of age. that is when we should be doing it weekly and if everything is normal it can be repeated even 5 or 10 years after that however if individuals are less age and that and they have this factors before all like uh, somebody is underweight somebody consumes lots of alcohol somebody has hypertrophic arthritis uh, somebody is on certain medicines like steroids or as i gonadism and as we discuss hyperthyroidism or any other hormonal problem that could is to develop uh, osteoporosis when anyone has any of these risk factors then a routine screening gmt can be performed earlier as well as uh, i mean as dictated by the situation so what we do in a bmd dexa is that we compare the individual bone mineral density in gram per centimeter square to that of a young healthy female of the same ethnicity and then we derive something called a t and t and t score less than minus 2.5 is termed Uh, uh as per the guidelines as a few for all now why do we want to uh, test bmd and why do we want to test that because we want to predict whether or not an individual is going to develop a fragility factor so there is another way uh, of uh, that probability and that is what is fraction 
practical skills tool is a very good and easily calculated uh, uh, score and it is available online uh, can search it and we can avail it and it is available for the indian ethnicity people as well we can input certain variables like age gender height and so on and so forth and what track school does is it gives us the 10 year probability of developing a major of the track so we can use that probability to decide whether or not an individual requires treatment to uh, prevent development and uh, development of a future fragility so bmd can be done yes for some reason that not available we can easily avail the track online and calculate the probability of development डिस्कशन स्टेप्स कैन Uh, we take to reduce the risk of osteoporosis during menopause dr himant fatale uh, yes yeah, the if the menopause occurring prematurely and that is less than 40 years of age these women need to be given the hormone replacement therapy that essentially means sequential pill of estrogen and progesterone and that is going to prevent the osteoporosis bone loss but if this patient is already a naturally occurring menopause at the proper age and in that case the hormone replacement therapy is not recommended just because the risk is more than benefit and in such patient the adequacy of calcium and adequacy of vitamin d is very important and in addition to that there is a weight bearing health exercises are also important and the dicta which i said previously also that don't fall i don't fall essentially means we need to have a, a more balance and more muscle strength at the same time the suggestion of tobacco or alcohol and in addition that we should have a dry bathroom concept and we so in addition to that we particularly in women that high yield should be avoided that is going to be reduced a lot uh, chance of fall with that there should be avoid the disturb or confused state of mind is also sometimes we that lead to the fall that also should be avoided and to ensure that there should be adequacy of light where you remove around and if you feel that your balance is not proper then the the health like maybe a, a rail the stainless steel rail should be when it's climbing up the staircase or while getting up from its bathroom some support which is uh, adequate support is needed so that can be prevented from the fall besides all these we after the age of 40 years we those who have a fragile fracture they need to be treated your doctor will decide which kind of therapy is to be there if you do a dexa scan in such case if you have osteopenia and if you apply the fracture risk code there is a frac score which is available on net and you calculate that and if that score if chance of hip fracture more than 3% or chance of generalized fracture more than 20% in such patients they need a pharmacotherapy to avoid the uh, to prevent osteoporosis or treat the osteopenia or to prevent the uh, chance of getting breaking the bone as well so what kind of therapy it may be an anabolic like uh, the, Dr. Arjun was talking about the parathyroid hormone, or Dr. Ash Segal Sir was also talking about the uh, the parathyroid hormone sequential therapy, and that is going to be an anabolic part of it. Well, anti-resorptive like dimosumab or bifosphate, that is to be decided by the the your treating doctor what is best suits for you in what is your situation. At the same time, it can be a sequential therapy to avoid the uh, the side effects of the drugs. It can be uh, that, but mind well. adequacy of calcium adequacy of vitamin d and maintaining the muscle strength is equally important okay so what are the treatment options for osteoporosis are treatments different for men and women dr arjunar uh, people with the highest risk of fractures are the ones most likely to benefit from drug therapy so we have a lot of commonly used agents i'll just touch upon how these Uh, medicines are given because that is what is more important so we have agents such as bisphosphonates dinuzumab sir was mentioning about dinuzumab and teriparatide 
these are the most commonly used agents so bisphosphonates are medications that actually slow the breakdown and removal of bone so even in bisphosphonates we have oral medicines which are for example alendronate is available as a pill that can be taken either once a day or once a week we also have injectable bisphosphonates such as zolendronic acid which is very convenient it, it is actually given as an injection once yearly so that form of treatment is very convenient for the patient dinazumab is another commonly used agent which is under the class of uh, drugs called as rank ligand inhibitors so that is also administered as an injection under the skin once in 6 months so the dosing convenience is there for dinazumab as well other commonly used agents there is uh, teriparatide as uh, sir was mentioning earlier it is a synthetic form of the natural human parathyroid hormone and this medicine it is slightly different from bisphosphonates and dinazumab so what this medicine does is it gives the body a chance to form new bone it increases the bone mineral density and the bone strength rather than reducing the bone uh, degradation this helps the body to form new bone and as a result it reduces the chance of getting a fracture for the patient as for the treatment options for male and female it is more or less same there are some subtle differences certain agents such as uh, not less commonly used agents such as calcitonin ibendronate have not been approved for treatment of osteoporosis in men and also in patients in male patients who have symptoms suggestive of hypogonadism or features suggestive of testosterone deficiency in those patients testosterone injection itself can be used as a bone drug in those patients who are at a high risk of fracture hmm. as uh, to reduce the fracture rates now can people who are already suffering from osteoporosis exercise what general recommendations do uh, would you give uh, for exercise to those people dr ashish segal uh, yes see uh, exercise is very important aspect of lifestyle modification that is advised to individuals who are both having osteoporosis or are predisposed to develop osteoporosis uh, yes the exception is somebody who has a current fracture or who has recently recovered from a fracture uh, should not be indulging in uh, exercise until and unless uh, advised by the treating doctor otherwise somebody who has osteoporosis should be engaging in a regular exercise program which should include both strengthening and balancing exercises strengthening exercise exercises can include weight bearing exercises in which we, we use our own body weight uh, while we work out and the examples include just uh, walking brisk walking uh dancing it can be climbing stairs and so on and so forth so these are weight bearing exercises that can be incorporated in like program uh we can also indulge in resistance training whereby we can use external weight but that should be done only under expert guidance and this is particularly true for someone who has not been working out for quite some time uh apart from that should avoid all high intensity exercises uh sudden twisting movements should be avoided because that can be predisposed to develop factor then the other aspect of exercise as program is balancing exercise i mean there are there are some exercises that help us uh, build muscle around big joints so that we are able to better maintain a balance and prevent fall hmm. if we prevent fall we can prevent a fracture so yes exercise regimen 30 minutes per day for most days of the week is actually very much helpful for individuals with us and doable as well many thanks to all the three doctors for joining us here on this discussion with that we are taking a very quick break <laughs>